So here we have the do-it-yourself module of posture and mobility from above, down, inside out. And today we're going to talk about something called primal pattern movements. Right? This is brought to us by a gentleman by the name of Paul Check. He's a holistic health practitioner from Southern California. He's a major advocate of upper cervical chiropractic. He was a keynote speaker at the NUCA conference one time. And he's known for training some of the world's best athletes, even training the trainers of some of the world's best athletes. And one of the breakthroughs that he developed in the 80s and 90s was these primal pattern movements. Basically, if you couldn't do these movements and you're in a, maybe a hunter-gatherer society a couple thousand years ago, um, and you couldn't track down your prey running through the forest, um, then you might starve. Um, and if you injured yourself to the point of detaching a major tendon and you couldn't get surgery on it, then your body was slowly gonna sort of compress and fold and you could starve that way too. And so these movements for our modern you know, era are helpful for preventing injury, helping you to heal back from setbacks as it relates to your spine and, and mobility. Um, but it also helps you to be aware of where some of your weak links are. For example, if you find that you're always buckling in on the one side when you get down into a squat or lunge, then it could indicate that you might have to do more myofascial or foam roll kind of releasing in this area immediately above and below the affected um, area of breakdown in order to in order to uh, rectify that so let's just go in order here we got the lunge squat push gate pull bend and twist we're going to show you from the side as well as from the front the proper way to do this and uh, if i'm wrong on any of my forms make sure you tell me because i want this to be as close to per uh, picture perfect as possible so the first one is going to be the lunge and i'm just going to use I got, I've got a kettlebell here and I've got a little dowel that I got from Home Depot. You can use a hockey stick, you can use a broomstick, doesn't matter. But basically when we get into the lunge, what we want to try to have happen is no ratcheting movements. We don't want to see our knee buckling in or out on either side. We want to keep our pelvis lined up over our feet so it looks something like this. Back to neutral, other side, back to neutral. From the side. Now my knee should not go out past my ankle, past the downside ankle, right? So there's the lunge. Next one is the squat. From the side, the first thing that should happen is the butt should go backwards about one inch, like we're about to sit down. So if this is neutral, go back about one inch and then start to drop down, right? We wanna keep our heels down on the floor, drop down to your thighs parallel with the floor if you can for just one second and then pop up. Same thing from the back to the front. You wanna have a little bit of a out towing of your feet, kinda of like that. And then you drop your butt back a little bit and then go down. You wanna make sure your knees don't buckle inward, nose over toes, and then just pop up. You can do the kettlebell with that. It's a little bit closer of a center of gravity. Just going down, popping up. Same thing, my butt goes back first a little bit, and then pop up and make sure your knees are not buckling out to the side. And again, no ratchety movements of your upper body. Next thing is the push. Now you can do this up against a wall, like an incline push. Try to keep your spine straight, right? So if you have this stick, you can have a partner just kind of hold that right back there to make sure you have good form. Um, if you have push-up bars, that way you can keep your wrists in a neutral position and not have to hyperextend them. That might be a good thing if you've had wrist injury, but you just wanna get in there all the way down and then pop up. So that's our push. If you can't do that, then fine, do a press up, but try to keep your shoulders perpendicular with your spine, something like this. Right? You don't wanna be all kind of ratchety like this. If you can only go up about that far, then that's fine. I'd rather have you have good form than to try to go beyond that and your body is twisting. The next thing is gait. So basically, again, nose over toes. You wanna to be aware if you're swinging one arm a lot more than the other. Do you feel like you're pounding down on one foot more than the other? 
Are you getting a good heel to toe strike? Or is there something maybe with your shoes where it just feels like for some reason you're always kind of just slamming down because the shoes aren't um, hugging your foot correctly all the way from heel to toe. And that's the same thing for jogging and the same thing for sprinting. Right? If you've had a history of lower body injuries, you know it might kind of cause you to distort or to uh, compensate a little bit. Just be aware of those areas because it could indicate weaknesses in some of the other movements, right? We're not trying to make you run a sprint a straight line without having any pain and to run a 100 meter dash in 10 seconds. We're trying to prevent future injury and make sure that you can do what you gotta do and be where you gotta be so that you can confidently avoid injuries from turning the wrong way when shoveling in winter time or raking in fall time, for example. The next thing is the pull. The best way to do this, just grab that kettlebell. I'm gonna keep my spine straight. Again, we could put that rod all the way down our spine, keep straight, and then just pull up like that. All right, the shoulders are perpendicular. I'm not going up like this. I'm not going way down like that. My shoulders are perpendicular from the front to back. Might look something like this. and do it on both sides. We're almost there, we got two more. The next one is the bend. We're almost there, we only have two more to go. The next one is the bend. Now, the kettlebell swing is my favorite exercise because it's good for cardio, it's good for, um, it's good fine motor movement, right? You have to have some skill in order to do it, which is good, it keeps you kind of on your toes. Um, not in the literal sense, you don't want to be on your toes when you're doing this, you'd lose your balance. But it's also good for strengthening. It's a good three in one. And if you just swing that kettlebell like 60 times, you're gonna have a pretty decent workout. Pretty decent, not full, but a pretty good um, start, let's just say, to a good full workout. But if you only have a couple minutes a day, a kettlebell swing is great if you're running short on time. So what you're gonna do is it's gonna be about a foot out in front of you. And then the first rep starts right away. So I get velocity coming in, I just pop the hips. And my arms come back to parallel with the floor every time. Popping with my hips, coordinating my pelvic movements with my shoulders. Keeping my spine straight, works basically every muscle in your spine. From the front, again, I start with the kettlebell about a foot in front of me. I get in here, I get velocity, pop it. You do this like 60 times within a couple of minutes, you're gonna be feeling it. So that's where we get the bend. And last but not least is the twist. Now just remember, any kind of athletic movement is really a combination of these primal pattern movements. If I'm a pitcher, look at that. I'm lunging, I'm pushing, I'm turning, I'm bending, I'm doing like five different movements. Getting into a car is like five different movements. So whenever we can integrate or combine these movements, there's gonna be a better payoff because it's more realistic, right? You're not just gonna have dumbbells and going like that in a real world situation. So when we do the twist, we can combine it with a lunge. I'm gonna demonstrate with the kettlebell and with the dowel. So basically we get down here like this, and then we can turn all the way over here so our shoulders are square. And then we can go back over here like that, and then get up and the same thing. And however far you wanna go. The same thing with the dowel. Get in here like this, drop down, Rotate one way or both ways. Obviously, it's more difficult to go against the grain, but you get the nice rotational movement in there and so on and so forth. So, so there we covered the lunge, squat, push, gate, pull, bend, and twist movements. How did you do on those? 
let me help you to overcome the weak links so we can fix that kinetic chain and that you can get more out of your care here.